Hey everyone, and welcome to another lesson in Swift Fundamental. Today I'm going to cover with you uh, strings, which is unit two, your introduction to UI kit, lesson one. Why do we need strings or why do we handle strings in programming languages? Obviously, strings are very important or text. It exists everywhere around us. And it's only natural that programming languages provide us the tool to handle and manage these text values, text data. All right. So uh, let's get started. Strings in, in the Swift, to define a string, all you need to do is that you say, you can either define it as a constant or as a variable. So if you define it as a constant, you can't change it. You say, let greeting equal hello. Now, um, the compiler knows that you're putting a string value in this. So the type inference determines that this is a string. And how does it determine that? But the existence of double quotation around the text value. This is the same thing, but here it's a bar instead of a let, so you can change this. Sometimes you want to uh, you want uh, a variable to contain a text that spans multiple line, and if you do that, what you need to do you need to put uh, like three double quotations. This would be the beginning of your string. And this is the end of your string. And then you, any lines and all the text value between these two will be included in the text uh, value for Joe. So here would be basically what would be printed because we want it to be to span multiple lines. You will have Q, why the chicken cross the road. And the joke is to get the other to the other side. <laughs> all right, funny. All right. If we go to the next slide, we talk about uh, string uh, escape sequence, or sometimes called escape characters. Why do we need them? They exist in other languages as well. Sometimes you want to include quotation in your string. And then in this case, if you do not include this escape sequence or escape character, what happens is that the compiler complains because it says you started a string here and then you have a string here. What about the rest of this? So it will complain. So to avoid these problems, what you need to do is say, okay, if I wanna include a, a double quotation in my string, I'll just simply include a backslash and then followed by the, uh, the quotation. Same thing here, followed a backslash followed by the quotation. Not only quotations, you can include backslash as well. You can include uh, a, uh, a tab if you want. You can include a carriage return. I think there are others uh, as well. Uh, and I know in other programming languages, they, they exist. Okay. String has, um, comes with a lot of properties and methods that makes the string class very um, uh, robust and it makes it very uh, rich with these properties and uh, methods. We're going to take a look at those things, some of them, not all, of course. So for example, here you have a string that, that has an empty value, no, no characters in it. So to check if you, have a, if you have value in a string or it's an empty, what you can do is that you can say, if my string dot, and we call this property is empty, then it will tell me if this, it will give me either true or false, and it will tell me, and based on that, we can do something with this string value, this, uh, that variable. So in this case, it's going to return empty because we define my string to have no characters in it, so you will get uh, the string is empty. <laughs> characters are strings, and strings in Swift, they're kind of similar. Uh, if you don't specify the, the type of that, of A, for example, in this case, even though it's only one letter, uh, the Swift compiler would treat this as a string with, this, uh, with the type in, uh, inference. Now, if you want to handle this as a character, that means it's only one single value, one single character, then you must specify that this is a character. So. This is a string, this is a character. Why? Because we specified it is a character. If you don't include that, it would be treated as a string as well, as a, similar to A, all right? Um, 
Concatenation. Concatenation is uh, the mechanism or the way that you put two strings together. So it's pretty straightforward. If you have uh, two string values here, string uh, variables or constant, string one, string two, and then the string one contains hello, and the other one comma space world, what will happen is that when you define, you create another string and this one var, so it's, it's, it's changeable. So it means my string now will include the first string plus concatenated, added, whatever you wanna call it, to the value in the second string so that you will get hello comma world, all right? So basically putting two strings together. You can use that also the shortcut. So for example, you can say, my string plus equal hello. So whatever is my string, I will add to it hello as well. All right, so that is string concatenation. Uh, string interpolation, basically sometimes you want to create a string and include in it some variables or some, dy some dynamic data. So the way we do that, you again, you will have a string, quotations around it, but for every variable that you want to include in your string, you will have a backslash brackets and then the variable name. So this one will include the value from uh, variable name, and then this one will include, include the value from variable age. So we'll have Rick, is 30 years old. And you could include expressions with the string interpolations. So in this case, you will have these variables A and B. If A is the value of A, which is four, and B is the value of B, which is five, then A plus B equal to A plus B. So this one is treated as an expression and it will calculate the result and it will include it in the output as well. Uh, when you want to compare a string, you can compare it, you can use the, use the double equal operator, or you can use the not equal. So in this case, we have three different uh, strings, okay, constants, say if month equal other month. So you're comparing these two values. If they are equal, then you will do this. Now, if you don't want to use the, if you want to check if they're not equal, you can say not equal. So that's how you compare strings. Now, if you want to be more creative when, when you compare strings, then you need to normalize the two values of the strings that you're comparing. So in this case, I'm saying Johnny Appleseed is the name, but I'm comparing it to Johnny Appleseed, but all mixed up with upper, uh, upper and lower case. So to normalize this comparison, what you do you will make this as a, the first one as a lowercase. So we'll use the function in the string class, lowercase. So that will change it to a lowercase. And then this string also, we change, we change it to a lowercase. Now, when you're comparing it, you're actually comparing similar values. Even it could be uh, upper and, and lowercase and all different kind of, uh, you know, different combinations, all right? There are other functions that are helpful. For example, there is has a prefix and suffix. Prefix will look for a pattern of strings and then to see if they exist at the beginning of a particular string. So here it says greeting, here's a greeting, has a prefix, hello. So does it include, does it have, does it start with hello? Obviously it does, so this would return true. Now, what about the second one? Has suffix means it doesn't end with the world uh, world uh, explanation mark, then in this case it does, so that will return true. Even though here it says does it have suffix, but this one is capital letter W and here is small w, so this will give you a false even though they are similar, but because it is case sensitive, then you're not, not it's kind of treated as different value. You could check to see if a string contains a particular value or not. And the way you do that, you check, you can call another functions, another great functions in the string class, which is 
contains. So in we have a variable here, or we have a constant here that includes, hi, Rick, my name is Amy. And then I say, I look for this string in, does it have my name in it? If it does, that means the person is greeting us. So it says, if greeting that, uh, that contains my name is, then we say, we'll assume this person is making an introduction, all right? And because it does find it, then it will be true. And then it will print, it's making an introduction. Another property that is great to use, which is the count in the class string class. So here you'll say let name equal Ryan, uh, Ryan Mears, and then it say let count equal the name that counts. So this will count how many characters in that string. And then if you want to know if, uh, you know, like a lot of times there are rules about creating passwords. So what you do is that you can say, how, does it mean that does it meet the minimum requirement of of, of our uh, you know pass, password uh, uh, rules or uh, creation? So what you do is that you say if the password length or the count less less than eight, then you can print a message saying that it's too short and need to be eight and above. All right, so you can use count for situations like these. You can also use switch statement with strings or characters. In this case, we're using switch statement to determine if a letter is a vowel or not. So I'm defining a very a constant called some character and it's E. Then the switch statement says, if this character switch some character is, is, any, is any of these cases, then it means that this is a vowel and we print a vowel. Otherwise it's not a vowel. Same thing can happen with a string, not only one character, you can have multiple value and then you can use the same uh, syntax to compare strings as well. Finally, Unicode, uh, Unicode exists in Swift. Um, you know, so expanding uh, on the basic character set, which is the, you know, the English alphabet, you could have thousands of other characters from different languages. And those are Unicode. So this one would be a Unicode. This is an Unicode as well. This is Unicode. And then this is would be uh, you're printing this uh, infinity sign, the count. The one thing to be careful about Unicode, the count does not always give you the same number of characters because uh, there are hidden characters in these Unicode values that um, it, it, you can't see them but they are stored inside your computer. And then to know actually how big it is, you need to print out the count of those characters, those strings. And then, then that way you can tell how long is uh, that particular string. I think that's it for this uh, lesson. Strings, very important in, most program in all programming languages. Same thing goes with the Swift. It's a very rich class. There's a lot more to cover. And I advise you to look at swift.org document, you know, documentation to see what else is available in this string class. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next topic.